Welcome back to the Bald Eagle 242 YouTube channel. Today I've got the Nikki carburetor off of this Craftsman YTS 3000 that I did the Hydrolock video on. I'm going to get into this thing and show you how to tear this thing apart, how to troubleshoot it. Later in this video, I've got a few minor announcements to make, so stick around and I'll share some more information with you on some things I'm working on. So let's get started on this thing and get this thing done. Makes it a little easier to take this top cover off. Take your air cleaner out. There's four 10 millimeter bolts around this thing. Just back these out off the back side of the carburetor and you should be able to slide this plastic cover up out of the way. Since we got the fuel shut off on here, shut this off. If you don't have the fuel shut off, just pinch this off. Take these all the way out. Go ahead and pull this little wire off the bottom of your carburetor here. Once you get that loose, take this and tilt it forward. Take your linkage out of there. That's your choke linkage first. There's a little spring right here. Take that out. Spring goes in the hole right next to this and then roll this off for your throttle linkage. All right, I finally got my rebuild kit for this Nikki carburetor. This is the carburetor that's off of the uh, Craftsman YTS 3000 that I just did the hydro lock video on, and I'll show you why this thing hydro locked. There's about three reasons why these carburetors will flood, and I'll show you all three of them. I'll also show you how to test this solenoid to make sure it's working, and I'll show you what comes in this kit. You've got the new plate, float, your needle, your needle pin. You've got your rubber gasket that goes on here to seal everything up. You've got the foam pieces that seal the top of your linkage. The two red o-rings that go on the front and the back of your carburetor to seal your intake your throttle plate screws comes with your adjustment screw and the spring to go on it your idle adjustment screw with the spring your return spring the washer that goes underneath the uh, solenoid here comes with your welch plug for that hole right there comes with a new jet and this o-ring does come separately i already put the o-ring over the end of it a lot of people don't like these nikki carburetors i personally don't have a problem with them they're pretty easy to rebuild this one i don't think needs to be cleaned just needs to have some parts replaced in it and i'll show you the most common reasons why these things cause hydro locking in the first place you can also buy the individual pieces for this this kit here will fix most of your problems with this and then a new needle the aftermarket chinese kit probably about the same as buying it this way if you want to stick with name brand and Briggs parts this is the way to go Briggs actually this is actually a plastic needle the one in the uh, aftermarket kit is actually a metal needle they both work I've used both of them never had a problem with either one of them I'll put some links below in the video description to these all right when you start tearing these carburetors down the first thing you want to do is remove this plastic cap and get it out of your way you can just pull that off of there you want to make sure you put this in the proper place so once you get this thing off just take it here just take that and throw it in the trash can. After you get that out, take a Sharpie, mark this so you have a point of reference. And all I'm doing is just marking that so I have a starting point. And then I'll screw this all the way in. So I'll turn that half a turn, one turn, one and a half. Actually about one and one and a third. And then I'll take this all the way out. So now when I put it back together, I know I need to screw this in about one and a third turns. Probably don't need to do much with that. I mean, it's already clean. I know this carburetor's clean. This carburetor has some other problems, but I'm gonna show you how to get this all apart. This carburetor's already been apart. Like I said, I did another video on this. If you wanna look at that, I'll put a link to that video right up here so you can check it out, but it was a hydro-locked mower because of this. Go ahead and pull this little gasket out, make sure it's not damaged in any way. Well, sometimes this gasket will come off in the carburetor, but this gasket here is one of your main reasons that this carburetor will flood. When this is inside the carburetor, it seals in this hole right here. Well, this is the inlet for your fuel, and your fuel comes in here and runs down in that hole. So if that doesn't seal, when you put this together right there, if that doesn't seal in there, gas is going to run over the top of this thing and flood the carburetor. So even if your needle and seat is good, it can still flood just because this little O-ring is bad. And that one does look a little flattened out, so we'll replace that. Next is pull this pin. I already knew this before I pulled this apart, because like I said, I showed this in the previous video. But this float doesn't have the rubber tip on it. Your main jet, this O-ring here can also go bad, and it'll cause it to surge if that goes bad, because it'll suck excess fuel up into the motor. This is what happened with this particular carburetor. You can see this tip has come apart. 
I think you could probably put that back on there. This tip is still very pliable. It feels like it's in good condition. I have no idea why that came off the tip there. It's not something I've ever seen in another carburetor unless it was so gummed up that you pull it off when you pull it out. This one appeared to be a part when I took it out. You're gonna reuse this. Now some kits, the kit I have came with this piece too, but if you're reusing this piece, just make sure this hole is cleaned out. Make sure everything is, is cleaned out of there. And if you are reusing your jet, I recommend replacing the O-ring, but if the jet looks fine, you can reuse this jet, no problem. Just make sure that the hole through the center of it is clear. Hold it up to the light, you can look through it. I don't know how well that'll show up on camera, but it looks pretty clean. This is the O-ring I took out, and you can see how it is stretched and flat. Sometimes you'll find these where they're torn or ripped. This is the new one. And what you wanna do is when you put this back together, put it on here first. Don't try to stick it up in this hole and then force this in there because you can actually damage it trying to put it together that way. Take your O-ring and put it on here. There is a low side on this, so what I do is start it on one of those sides and then walk it around. It'll be a tight fit. Don't poke this, but just take the side of your tool, screwdriver or something, and just slide that down on there. I thought we would need this little pick because most of the time this will get stuck in here and you gotta pick it out. This one came out on here, so we didn't have to do that. If you do have a dirty carburetor, you can take this, spray carb cleaner through all these orifices, get this real good and clean down in there. You can spray carb cleaner in there. Spray your carb cleaner down in this hole right here. This is where we took your adjustment screw out of. I'm just gonna put it right back in because there is nothing that needs to be cleaned on this carburetor. And what I'll do is I'll bottom that all the way out and we know we need to come out one and a third turns. And that's something you have to check before you pull it apart. So we're gonna look at our mark there, currently right here on the back side. So I'm gonna go one. And I know that started on the top when I took it out. So a third of the turn will bring that right back to the top. It's kind of getting rubbed off, but that's where we started at with that. And don't put that plastic cap back on there. There's no reason for that cap. That gives you a full range of adjustment on this. Same way with this one, you can kind of see how much it's sticking out. Unless your spring is damaged or something, you can just leave that one in there while you clean your carburetor. Drop this down in here with the O-ring at the bottom. You'll see that comes through right there. When that goes into place, that O-ring should hold it. So that'll hold that in place. Then we can put our carburetor together. I'm gonna go ahead and use this new Briggs & Stratton needle, part number 696136. Go ahead and take your float, hold it with this part towards the bottom. Take your needle and slide it down in there like that. That way it'll stay in there. Take that, drop it down in this hole here. The other thing you wanna do is while you got this float out, shake it just See if it's got any fluid in it. Sometimes these will get a hole or they'll crack. Especially if you've got a carburetor that's sat with water in it, that water will freeze and crack this plastic. Push that pin through there. Make sure it's kind of even on both sides. And you want to make sure that this float has enough travel room. You don't want it to bottom all the way out. Now I can force it down there to where it bottoms out, but make sure this isn't going all the way to the top before that float bottoms out. If it is, it will not seal. There are two different styles of these carburetors. I should have mentioned that earlier, but some of these, this O-ring here is actually made into this gasket. Before you order your parts, make sure you've got the one that requires the parts with the separate O-ring. You can kind of put this on here and press it down in here. It's not going to be a snug fit, but it should hold it in there enough that you can get this together. It's better to put it on here than it is to try to put it on the carburetor. And then once you get that in place, keep this upright. Put the center right down through the middle without hitting that gasket so you don't knock it out of place. And then get that lined up. Keep this upright and just push it straight up on there. And that gasket should be visible all the way around the outside because your bowl seals on that. Before I put this bowl back on here, I'm gonna show you a real quick way to test this solenoid too to make sure that this is working. All you need to do is take this over to your mower. Now if you watch the other video, I've already got a replacement carburetor on this one, so I'm rebuilding this one for another mower, but unplug this plug all I'm gonna do here is plug this in and then flip the key on and off so that you can hear and see this. You'll see this little plunger in the inside of this bowl going in and out. When you turn the key on, it should pull in, and when you turn the key off, it should pull out. You can test this on the mower even without removing the carburetor because you can feel this and you can hear it pulling in and out. You might not be able to see it without pulling the bowl off, but if you hear it and feel it, you'll know it's working. Once you get all that back together, make sure your gasket is, is squared up there around the center. These particular carburetors, this bowl will go back on either way. You can do it this way or this way. It doesn't matter. Some carburetors are a little more picky and this goes on a certain way. I do recommend marking this before you take it off. I did not, but if you're worried about that, mark it with a Sharpie or something before you take it off or scratch it 
just so you know it went, it went back on the same way and then put your screws back in not much else to do on this one doesn't need any cleaning i don't think it was dirty at all i mean the guy says he was driving this across his yard and it started losing power and like i said check out that other video if you want to see the whole story on this mower what i'll do at this point to confirm this isn't leaking is just go ahead and hook my fuel line up here now i'm just going to set the carb right here make sure it's upright and then i'm going to turn this fuel on now you'll know pretty quickly if that carb's leaking you'll start seeing fuel run out of it but uh, i'm gonna go ahead and leave that there for a second and just see if that doesn't leak there we should be good to go we're gonna put our throttle linkage in first make sure that's hooked down in there pay attention to that which hole your carburetor linkage came out of once you get all your linkage hooked up put this back up here put your gasket back in here Hook your wire back up here on the bottom. Hook your fuel line back up. Turn the fuel back on. I wanted to pull this front stud out here because something I should have mentioned earlier when I was showing you that parts kit. The welch plug underneath here, if you have a surging issue with this carburetor, check this welch plug. Just back this stud out. Just make sure that doesn't have a hole in it or it hasn't vibrated out, but that is definitely something that'll cause some surging on your carburetor. I've got another video that shows you a whole process of how to diagnose that on a John Deere tractor. It's a Kawasaki motor, but the idea is the same. You just got to make sure that welch plug is there and it's in good shape all right got this thing back on i've had the fuel on for a little bit something else i want to explain this solenoid on the bottom of your carburetor is not something to keep it from leaking fuel what this is is it's kind of used as an anti-backfire device and what it does is it shuts off when that plunger that i showed you earlier goes up into the bottom of this carburetor it seals off that main jet on the bottom of the carburetor because as you turn the key off this engine is still sucking fuel into it and what will happen is it'll suck fuel in there it'll pump it through the engine it'll get out in the exhaust and you shut the key off when it's hot and it'll backfire so if your mower's cranking and won't start you can try to start it with a little shot of fuel or something in the carburetor there check this plug and check this solenoid you can check this even right now just by turning the key on and off you'll hear it clicking and you'll actually feel it if you put your finger on it if you didn't realize it too i did pull this aftermarket carburetor back off and put the original nikki carburetor back on there just so we could try this thing out that is the same carburetor we just rebuilt and this is an aftermarket. <laughs> if you look at these carburetors side by side, there's not a whole lot of differences to tell them. But if you've got a mower that you know very little about, you can tell this plastic piece here is a little bit different. Similar but different. This one has the stop. Your original Nikki carburetor does not. So, and obviously this one doesn't say Nikki or Briggs on the side of it either, where this one does. So anyway, let's try to get this thing started up here and see what happens. It has not been started yet. I have left the fuel on for a while to make sure it had fuel in it. I'm going to turn the choke on here. I think that'll work. I did leave that thing sit down here for quite a while too, probably about 45 minutes while I went in and had some lunch. I have no leaks on that. Pretty confident we got it back together. Since we counted the turns on this, we didn't need to really adjust it. It sounds fine to me. I don't see any reason to adjust it, but if you have one of these that you don't know where to start at, I would pull it back out about a turn and a half, maybe two turns. Generally, this is about two turns. This one was one and a third, but start at about one and a half to two turns, and then you can kind of fine tune it from there. All right, hopefully that helps you out if you've got a similar problem on a mower that's flooding or possibly surging. These carbon Carburetors are not really that difficult to work on. I know a lot of people prefer the wall barrels over the Nickies, but both of them work when they're set up right and everything is working, you know, and all your components inside of them are good. If you've got one of these carburetors, don't give up on it. You know, you can replace them with these aftermarket carburetors pretty uh, inexpensively, but it's even cheaper to buy the parts. So anyway, guys, 
I told you earlier I'd share some information with you that I'm working on kind of behind the scenes. I have started an Instagram channel. I've started a Facebook group, and I'm also working on a website. All of them are Bald Eagle 242. They're open to anybody, so come on in there, ask some questions. I'm going to be sharing some pictures and some stuff on there that I won't necessarily be sharing on YouTube just because the format's more designed for interaction and, you know, comments and stuff like that. So One other thing I want to mention is I was invited to the Long Care Frank podcast where it has some details about not only me, kind of my ambitions on this channel, some things I've done in the past and some goals I've got for the future. I appreciate you watching this video. Thanks again. Till next time.